launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with Rick Gerard. Does college debt hinder your ability to attract the best talent? Today we're going to explore that and find out. You know, when you get in debt, you become a slave. You know who said that, Dane? Andrew Jackson. Aha, uh-huh, I gave him the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rick Gerard. Welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. Our mission is to disrupt recruiting. We're uh, here to share insights from top performing entrepreneurs and industry experts and provide proven tactical solutions to solve your company's toughest hiring challenges. Today, our guest is Dane Petchel, the founder and president of Oracle College Planning. With a long history of uh, helping people with the retirement finance world, Dane shifted the focus to help families, mainly parents and children, identify the best path to take for financial responsible college experience. Dane committed himself to helping families carefully protect their life savings from soaring college costs. Oh God, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can't wait until my daughter's in college. Mm-hmm. Uh, while ensuring proper financial pathway uh, would be in place for students and they wouldn't be saddled with debt after graduating. So Dane, welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show today. Well, Rick, I appreciate the invitation. Happy to be here and excited to talk about this topic. Absolutely. So we're going to cover a couple things today. First, we're going to talk about the effects student loans have on career choices, starting from the beginning. And um, then we're going to provide some solutions on how companies might be able to capitalize on that debt to attract high-performance talent. You ready to get started? I'm ready to get started. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to. I'm going to evoke your expertise here because you work with families on a daily basis to help them kind of uh, actually get the best uh, value out of their college experience, right? Correct. All right, so let's start this out on a positive note so it's not a doomsday episode. Uh, Let's talk about ways in which a person can reduce the amount of student loan debt they take on. All right, probably would be smart to take half a step back just to say, why are we even having the conversation? Yeah. And and that's just because the cost of college is, is astronomical. You know, it's through the roof, as we were just discussing, you know, back when I was in school, which was, as you can see, many moons ago, yeah. you know, it was roughly a thousand dollars a semester. So it wasn't that big a deal if you made a mistake and had to take half a step backwards and then, yeah. you know, two steps forwards from there. But I think with, mine was roughly like 3,500 to five grand or something like that. It was super cheap. Right. But in today's environment, when you look at it, that a Cal State can be costing $25,000 a year, a UC 35000 your private schools, SC Chapman, 60 plus, and an elite school, Harvard, Stanford, you know, we're into the 70 plus thousand. It's a little bit that's different of a tuition. story. Just yeah. tuition. Well, that's that's what's called cost of attendance, all in. So that's, <laughs> that's everything for one year of college, one okay. year of school. So, yes, it has kind of changed the game a little bit. So it does require probably a little bit more thought and a little bit more planning, you know, to address this. All right. So give our our audience a bit of a snapshot on on how they might be able to kind of approach this. Okay. Well, the the old way of looking at it, it used to be, you know, you would choose a college and then you would choose a major and then you would choose a career. And you go, okay, that made made sense. But kind of using college as an experience to kind of find yourself. But sure. in today's environment, with the cost of college being what it is, it's a little bit difficult to find <laughs> yourself at those prices. It's now high school. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we look at it and we've kind of adjusted that a little bit to say, you know, you have to consider your career first and what you want to be doing. And then once you know your career, which I understand it, it, it's tough to get a high school kid to commit to what they want to do for the rest of their lives. But, sure. but you talk about attitude, aptitude, what they're good at, what they like doing, and then you project Project that out to you know what careers would that possibly you know lead to and then once you have the career now you look at majors and say what major feeds into that career got it and then once you have a major now you look at schools to say okay well what schools have that major have a good program in that major and then that will lead towards their career okay so college selection really becomes the key here In the old days, it used to be you had your safety schools and you had your target schools and you had your reach schools, and all of that was just dependent upon your ability to get in, your ability to be accepted. Now you have to look at that and then kind of lay over that and say, well, it has to also be financially acceptable. 
sure. because you can bankrupt yourself and your family, you know, and really take your career, derail your career early on by Before overpaying, it even gets started. Right, overpaying right. for college. All right. So let, let's delve into that because that's a really interesting point. I mean, what are some of the inherent challenges related to that student loan debt when you take it on and you, and you graduate? Well, when you take on the student loan debt and you graduate, now you come out of college and, and trust me when I say I've got a lot of clients that feel like they have this elephant on their back oh, yeah. that's, that's strapped to or a ball and chain that says, wow, I have now really accumulated a, a tremendous amount of student debt and I've got to get this taken care of. And so they're a little bit freaked out coming out of the block saying, okay, I've, I've got to get a job, I've got to get a job fast and, yeah. and I have a lot of loan repayment to to make up and that's there. a huge problem i got to get a job and i got to get a job fast to pay for it that's not necessarily a career-minded no no it's not the ideal situation where you actually feel that pressure that okay i need something and i need something fast you know yeah. it's not the optimum environment to be out there really looking and thinking about your career engaging you know what would be the best way to proceed forward sure now i read i read that uh, roughly 7 million people in the U.S. are in default with their college loans. Does that okay. sound about right? It does sound about right. Okay, so there's, what, 44 million people that, that carry student loan debt. Yeah. Okay, and unfortunately, the number of people in default is increasing as a percentage every single year, oh, meaning it was just poor planning going in, and, yeah. you know, it's exposing itself on the on the other side. Here. And and. Poor planning going in, which really cultivates into making poor job, job decisions when you come out, right? And then not managing your career properly so you can continue to grow in your career and, and, and go up that, that monetary compensation structure. Right, and I would say twofold. Poor decision planning going in, yeah. meaning you weren't really selecting you know, a major and a career that was going to lead you to a job that was going to be able to pay you to be able to afford. <laughs> so humanity studies and uh, basically <laughs> so art psychology history, degree, uh, art, art history, history, probably not. Don't necessarily automatically translate into you know a good paying job. Yeah, unless you're going for the PhD, I would imagine, right? Right, exactly. Okay. And now, along with that, though, comes that price tag. You want to talk about that debt load coming out with your PhD, as we had just briefly mentioned. You know, I met with a, a client last week who had did have his PhD, but also had along with it $130,000 in student loan debt. And so he's paying that off at a rate of $1,000 a month for the next 12 years to pay off that loan. That seems to me like that's pretty low though, right? I mean, you can get it up in the million range, can't it? Oh, well, there was one example, all right? Okay. A dentist coming out of SC, all right, where I believe he was paying roughly $90, $1,000 a year for dental school. And then with interest on his loans and compounded, he was now up to a million dollars in student loan debt, yes. <laughs> oh, God. So what does that take to pay that off? You're looking at, what, 10000 a month for well, 10 years? Well, in, in this instance, he's able to. They offer you, they do offer you, you know, different programs to pay right. this off. And, and he was able to find the one all right, that says you just have to pay a percentage of your income for 25 years, and then they will wipe out anything that's left after 25 years. Oh, wow. So his loan was so extreme that in only paying a percentage of his income for 25 years, he will actually walk away paying less than he borrowed. But that is, that's more the uh, exception to the rule, right? That's definitely the exception to the rule. All right. So... We, we have the, the, the debt, the default rate is through the roof. Um, how did, it limits your ability to get, the, get a job, right? I mean, you're basically making a rash decision. I mean, it does. You come out and again, you have this, this pressure to pay off this student loan debt. And at the same time, you know, you just graduated from college and you have your career, your goals, your aspirations, you know, that have brought you to this point and, and there really is a conflict now. Do you, do you take the higher paying job that's going to allow you to alleviate yourself of some of the student loan debt or, you know, do you follow your heart? Do you follow your passion, you know, and become the teacher you wanted to be or the social worker you wanted to be and, you know, struggle with just making ends meet on a month to month basis. And, and that's going to be the inherent problem is that people are going to, you're going to have more people going into 
professions like attorneys and bankers as opposed to teachers and scientists because of that right i mean exactly right yeah. you know so society as a whole will certainly be you know impacted by you know these decisions and the student loan debt <laughs> okay um it also affects your ability to get a job i would imagine especially government related jobs if you're in default right well, if you're in default, certainly your yeah. credit's going to be destroyed. And credit is actually something that, you know, some employers, and you would know more than I, you know, on this end, but that they actually look at or maybe take into consideration. Yeah, if you're in the finance realm, I mean, that's really, really important. Oh, there's no question in my realm yeah. in the finance Software realm. Software engineers, uh, you know, sometimes they don't care that <laughs> <laughs> You can spend all the money on games you want. <laughs> all right. So, um, License suspension, I mean, can that result in in some of these things too? Oh, of course, of course. You know, when you get yourself in, you know, in debt and in financial problems, you know, certainly in, in my area, you know, financial advisory, you know, yes, they will not issue you a license or keep you, you know, aligned with, with them, appointed with the, different, with the different carriers there and the people you have to do business with. So, in essence, the biggest issue here is that you're shackled to what you hate to pay the bills. Exactly right. All right. You are forced to kind of basically put your life on hold and, and assume another life where you now have to just work at a job you don't really care for. You aren't excited to go into work every day. And the only thing you're you're thinking about is how can I get this student loan paid off and, and get through this period of time so that I can actually begin the life that I had envisioned. Yeah. So you're prolonging your actual life in order to pay off the student debt. And as a result, I think companies suffer from that because they're not hiring the right people. They're hiring people that just need the job to pay the bills, and they're probably not getting the maximum productivity out yeah. of them. Really, they just need the paycheck, and yeah. then they're forced to go to work and do whatever they have to do, generally at a minimum level, to you know get their paycheck each week and kick that can down the road until just they can get out of it. do enough to stop mm -hmm. themselves from getting fired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. God, that's such a terrible yeah. thing that we're setting up here. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're talking to Dane Petchel, the founder and president of Oracle Financial College Planning. Um, when we get back, we actually we were talking about uh, college debt forcing people to make poor career decisions. We're going to take a, when we come back. I really want to talk about how companies can capitalize this and make you know help people to make the right career decisions. <laughs> You're listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard, giving you access to recruiting techniques that will help you hire key talent to build your company towards real success. Rick is a recruiting executive and entrepreneur who's been successfully recruiting in the aggressive Silicon Valley technology landscape for the past two decades. After a very successful stint at Apogee, he founded Stride Search in 2012. Based on a lean efficiency model, Stride has uniquely positioned itself as a leader in retained search for the most critical talent hires within a small organization. Whether you're a startup executive or recruiting professional, by listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard, you will walk away with skills to help you attract and hire great talent. Now back to Higher Power with Rick Gerard. Welcome back to the Higher Power Radio Show. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and today our guest is Dane Petrol, the founder and CEO of Oracle College Planning. We're discussing why college debt might be forcing people to make poor career choices as well as poor hiring decisions. So we're going to delve a little bit into that. Um, so when people make poor career choices, become a, we've, we've kind of established it's mainly because of necessity mm -hmm. <laughs> that is what's impacting them, right? Correct, correct. As you come out of school and you're, and you're burdened with this student loan debt, you are forced to, to seek employment immediately. Yeah. And sometimes opting for the higher paying job than rather than you know a, a good career choice job or being an entrepreneur oh correct yeah correct. so i think that um you know your talents are going unwasted or going wasted if you, if you can't afford to to pay your bills i mean you might have a great next new toaster you know the hottest toaster of the year and you can't make it because you, of that right exactly you don't have any time to spare basically you know you come out of school and it's time to 
you know, start paying off your student loans. And so you need income immediately. You can't wait. You can't live out of the garage for, you know, the two months, three months, six months, a year, two years yeah. for your product to, you know, to develop. I, I'm lucky enough not to be carrying any student loans. <laughs> so I'm wondering, when do you have to start paying on them? You have to start paying, you know, 90 days after you leave school. After you leave school. Right. And, and so as long as you're in you school. Have three months to find a job. So, you know, the good news is for those who graduate, at least you have a degree. You know, the bad news is, is certainly for people who, you know, go to college and take out student loans and then don't finish. And so now you're left with no degree and student debt. Now, when we were talking on the phone the other day, you were telling me that it's average taking about five and a half years for each person to graduate? Yes, yes. You know, the four-year college degree is, I can't say mythical, you know, your smaller private, <laughs> your smaller private schools, maybe your elite schools will, will help you get through. But, you know, in California, the average time to graduate from a California state college is 5.7 years. 5.7 years. So you're not even talking four so years. give it another uh, year or two, uh, and we're going to be at six-year college. Uh, correct, correct. Wow. And, and the bad news there, certainly from my side, you know, it's just compounded because basically all of your financial aid ends after four years. So that fifth year, not only are you not working, the opportunity lost there, but you're also paying full price you know, for the price of school now because your financial aid is ended and then heaven forbid, you know, that sixth year. I'm so glad I'm not in college, but I'm not <laughs> looking forward to it. I've got an eight-year-old daughter mm -hmm. and you know what? I'm not looking forward to that that time. Hopefully uh, she's going to be an yeah. entrepreneur. <laughs> 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 I'm encouraging mm -hmm. her to uh, follow the ways of, mm -hmm. you know, Bill Gates mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just get accepted into Harvard mm -hmm. and then drop out after a year and start your own Facebook. That's right. I think just having the opportunity to go to Harvard would be enough. Right? Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she could be like Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So really what we're talking about here is, is regret, right? People are going to really kind of start to regret the choices they are forced to make because they have to pay back this, this loan. So how does this affect companies? Well, companies certainly have to be aware of it or, or should be aware of it if they, if they aren't already. You know, that in their hiring process, when they're looking at somebody coming in, is that individual really interested in coming to work for their company to improve their company, or are they just trying to get by and pay their student loans? Well, we've loan kind debt? of established that most of them are not. I, mm -hmm. I would guess that the cream of the crop and the people that have, have been within their realm of what they're training for in their career mm -hmm. through college are, but those people who have the humanities degrees, mm -hmm. probably not so much. Nope, and so they're out there looking for a way to pay off that student loan debt. So are we recommending that they don't hire people who have <laughs> random degrees? No, I think what they have to do is, is create an environment where they're accepting of these people and understanding, certainly, of their student loan debt. Yeah. All right, so inherent challenges that kind of come in into play. I mean, you've got low motivation. You've got poor employee performance. This is like all the recipe for disaster, especially right. if you're a smaller company, right? You can't right. afford it. Right. And, um, and you're spending, and, and most of the time, they're spending time during work looking for other employment. Right. And so it's not totally an unusual situation for, for businesses, and, and a lot of businesses, corporations have, you know, brought in or introduced you know, their wellness programs. Sure. And, and so, you know, their wellness programs, and, and maybe it started with health. They were trying to get them to lose a little bit of weight or, you know, get create a little. Get rid of the corporate little... butt. <laughs> <laughs> that also. All right. And then they actually introduced, you know, some financial wellness into that. But most of the financial wellness is even just focused on, you know, retirement planning, you know, yeah. participating, you know, in the company 401k plan and putting money into that. So, now it would be an opportunity for them to maybe say, okay, more people are coming in, certainly all the new hires that actually have more of an interest, more of a need initially, just in paying down student loan debt than in saving for retirement. You know, and we touched upon this before. Um, and it, what I found interesting is I was doing research for our, our conversation was that there was a lot of, this topic was really hot a couple of years ago during the election year. Mm -hmm. Everybody was interested. I haven't seen any articles written in the past year and a half about this. And it's still a huge problem continuing to be one, right? 
I mean, it it is a huge problem. Yeah. I mean, you understand student loan debt is, you know, $1.4 trillion. And so that's, that's it, it, right? it, it's, second in, it's second in debt, you know, behind home mortgages and ahead of credit cards. So it's substantial and it's yeah. out there and it's impacting a lot of people's lives and, and will impact, you know, long term our economy. That's probably a, a radio show for another day. But but it is there and it is of a, you know, a large magnitude. Yeah. And 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 it certainly is, as we established, going to distort the labor market, which yes. is going to make our current unemployment rate. Somebody told me that we're actually at minus 100 percent unemployment right now because there's two jobs for every person right now, even in Orange County. Yep. So if you get God, if we can clone people, I think we've yeah. got a million dollar, <laughs> a billion dollar idea. Well, Dane, let's start a go. new business. Uh, yeah, I think I'd start your daughter on that one. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I don't know if I want to clone my daughter. Then I have two kids, and that would be a problem. So how might companies be able to capitalize in this and attract the right people by helping to alleviate the student loan debt wound that, that people have right now? Right, that exists, you know, when they come into work. Because I would have to believe that somebody did come in who is just fretting, you know, on a month-to-month -month basis, paying off the student loan if their place of employment, their employer was actually helping them with that problem, you know, it could start to turn the tide on their feelings and their emotions towards their employer and their, yeah. and their job in general. Well, it's probably why companies like Google and Amazon, I mean, they're paying college grads a ridiculous amount of money coming out of college, probably to offset a lot of that cost and, and keep right. them motivated and engaged. They have the pocketbook to be able to do that we don't. Not, every, not everybody does. Right. I, I can't I was, afford to pay somebody two hundred thousand dollars a year coming out of college. Right. No, I uh, in my restaurant days, yeah, I employed a lot of people and understand that certainly they would love every single benefit I was willing to give them. Yeah. However, me being able to afford all those benefits for them, you know, wasn't really realistic. So as a small company, you know, think about maybe building this into a benefits program. And yep, and you could, and it could start with as little as, you know, including it in your wellness program. So you've not only got your retirement planning, but you also have, you know, college debt and at least recognizing it. You well, know? they should create something like a 501k, which pays <laughs> off your college debt first and then goes to retirement, right? Which would because generally you're putting be... money into retirement. You can't touch that. I mean, all you're doing is, is, is uh, offloading your tax liability to when you're 65, which... But, but why not pay off the college debt first? That right. It would, make, it would be a logical first step there. And so I think the, the real first step is just I should recognizing, run for public office. Yeah, is just <laughs> recognizing that it's there. Okay, you have this student loan debt, and, and let's make sure you know, that you keep a handle on this and that we're able to keep the payments going. There are ways that wouldn't even cost the businesses so much money to refinance some of these debts sometimes that a lot of people just wouldn't be aware of also so that they could possibly consolidate some of their higher interest student loans you know, into a, a lower interest student loan, thus a, a lower payment. And this wouldn't be costing the businesses anything, but if it you know, was incorporated into their wellness plan, you know, something that could yeah. work. Yeah, that would be a great benefit for employees. All right, so um, recruiting people from outside industries is, is something that I think is, is really important because there's gonna be a lot of these people that are gonna be probably solid achievement focused people that are just in the wrong industry yep. and yet um, they just need to be tapped on the shoulder and said hey look at we've got something better um, so looking outside the box I think accomplishment based hiring would would bring that to light um, opportunity there's opportunity in this somewhere you see any opportunity well, it's again, it's a little outside the scope of what I do right now, but <laughs> but in, in doing my own reading and a little researching, you know, for the talk today, I have to say it looks like there's a tremendous area out there to yeah. to go and work with businesses just on how they should be incorporating or talking to, you know, people coming in from an HR perspective on, you know, addressing their student loans and, and how, you know, they're willing to work with them to to help alleviate that problem. Yeah, and you know, since money is the main issue, and I'm not a big advocate of hey, let's let's talk about the money because um, just I know it's the reason why people take a job, but sometimes uh, career fulfillment is a little bit more important. But what about looking into providing performance incentives that'll offset some of that debt? That might be a really creative way in which a company can attract people. 
That is a terrific way to. Thank you. I thought of that all on my own. You know? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, Dane, you know what? Uh, I, um, I want to thank you for being here and in- investing your time in today's Higher Power Radio Show. Uh, now, how would somebody best get in touch with you if they're interested in college planning or uh, maybe the, your new sideline business that we just created? <laughs> <laughs> HR consultant yeah. on, on employee benefits on how to pay off college <laughs> debt. Yeah. yeah, you're yeah. you're focused on college debt. I mean, hey, why not? I just made you a 360 <laughs> business, baby. All right, so my business is Oracle College Planning. Yep. And people could Google that. I'm pretty easy to find on How do they find you on, on the, the web? What's uh, your URL? On the web, oraclecollegeplanning.com. Okay. And so you know, our advice, you know, my advice to anybody with high school age, you know, college bound kids, you know, come to one of our free monthly workshops or one of our every, and we have a couple each month uh, live webinars, you know, just to hear about ways to save money on the cost of college. And, and I'll give you another little plug here because I think you can, you, you've been successful in helping people save like how much percentage of well the average saved this is for 2017 we already have the the numbers in for yeah. last year and and so out of 1200 people that we helped the average saved going to a private school was ninety eight thousand two hundred and fifty six dollars Woo! all right so <laughs> if you got kids are getting ready to call it good college call dane <laughs> um what's uh what's your email address and phone number all right, email address, dane at oraclecollegeplanning.com. Spell that out. O-R-A-C-L-E. And it's D-A-N-E. Oh, D-A-N-E, yeah. okay. that part. Yeah. Dane Just... at oraclecollegeplanning.com. Phone number 949-398-4300. All right, well, I want to thank our listening audience to tuning in to this week's episode of Higher Power. A quick thanks to our team, our engineer, Paul Roberts, our producers, Andrea Ballin, Shanti Ryle, and Kim Iverson. If you like this show, please subscribe, rate, and review. Uh, your input is welcome and needed to improve the content of our show. Join our community at Hire, that's H-I-R-E, Power, P-O-W-E-R, Radio, R-A-D-I-O, dot com, or subscribe to Higher Power Radio on your favorite platform. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, YouTube. And uh, we're, we're getting ready to launch on uh, radio.com. Um, follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook at Higher Power Radio Show, or you can follow me on Twitter at Rick underscore Gerard. Tune in next week. We'll be, uh, we'll be actually talking or doing another show on gamification, which I'm pretty excited about. Our guest is going to be Hank Levine, the president and CEO of iPlace USA. I'm your host, Rick Gerard. And you have been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Aloha. Thank you for listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard on OC Talk Radio.